There he goes again. Yeah, baby! My little buddy here is exceedingly excited because he just switched to Central Pacific Bank. It's epic! Without CPB, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. All the places we can go. Hey guys, I'm Andrew. And I'm Kobe, and welcome back to Uncut Hawaii, presented by Central Pacific Bank. This is the podcast where we talk to Hawaii's most interesting and innovative creators, entrepreneurs, and change makers. And today we have a pretty epic guest. She is amazing. Her music is everywhere. She's into so many different things. And, you know, just this year alone, she's done so many things. So many things. We're talking about three-time Nahoku Hano Hano award-winning singer-songwriter Paula Funga. Mm -hmm. And we had an amazing conversation with her. Like, I was crying, like, Uh in tears. Yeah, we we all got emotional. Yeah. And it, it, it was just... Great to talk about, you know, this current era in her life yeah. and what she's up to and um, things that like she's working towards too. Yeah. So it's, it's it's amazing and, and so to hear and just talk story and yeah. she gives a lot of good advice. Yeah, mm-hmm. we really get to, I feel like we really got to know her and just my heart just like loves her. I just, she was just so open and like shared so much with us and we were just really Great right call. off the bat, we did like yeah. rapid fire questions, and even then, like we just got emotional already. So I was <laughs> I like, know. "Oh man, oh, like we is this the whole episode?" This episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so bring out your tissues for this one. Shout out to Subaru Hawaii for sponsoring today's episode. It only makes sense because Paula Funga is one of their Subaru Hawaii ambassadors. Yeah, and learning more about Subaru, you know, it just feels like more than just a car company. It feels like their drivers, like Paula, they really do care about giving back to the community, passionate and adventurous. Nice. Yeah. So if you drive a Subaru, make sure you take advantage of their More Love Loyalty Program, which offers special deals and offers around uh, the state. And it's super cool because Subaru is pretty much bringing together these drivers to support local businesses yeah. around the community. Yeah, that's super cool. So be sure to sign up. Um, Subaru owners can sign up for free today at SubaruMoreLove.com. Enjoy this episode. Paula, right. Paula, thank you welcome so much to for being Uncut. Here. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for being here. We're so honored. So excited to talk story with you. Yes, I'm honored to be here talking story with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know yes. we've, we've worked together a few times for mm-hmm. Olukai, for um, Serco, and so mm-hmm. it's exciting and, you know, to finally like just sit down and actually talk story and just yeah, talk about what everything that you're involved with. Yeah, thank things. you so much. So many things. But oh. before we get into that, we're going to start with some rapid fire questions just to kinda get just us like going. Warm it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. It's kind of random, but all right. So, is there an album or artist that you are really into right now? Yeah, I'm into Paul Simon right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. You- Mike Love just turned me on to this album, his album called Graceland. And it's with this like amazing band called Lady Smith Black Mom Basel or something like that. Uh-huh. Okay. And it's this choir from Africa. And oh wow. They're just so amazing. I I when I seek out music, I tend to look for stuff I've never heard before. Yeah, different you know? kind of music yeah, sounds. Like things that that are old, that Mm -hmm. have been around for a long time. You know, Mm -hmm. I always say music travels at the speed of molasses, and that's exactly what I mean, because, like, yeah, even though my best friend's listened to it his whole life, like, I never heard of this album, you know? And they're out of Africa. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm, That's a good way to put it. Everybody go look for that. Yeah. Um, What's your go-to meal or thing to cook right now? Right now, I would cook. Some fried poke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Lunch getting time. like a fresh pound of poke yeah. or how much ever. And I love to fry it up and eat it with poi. Mm. Yeah, so, so good. good. I'll soup so it up good. a little bit. I'll put yeah, like, some, you know, the, some more red chili flakes, oh, some yeah. more pakai, sesame oil, whatever mm. you have, you know. That's a good thing and about just, some poke, onions. Yeah. You, yeah. Pretty much anything you can throw on. Yeah. It's so good. It'll be so good. Yeah. Okay, what's the most memorable concert you've ever attended? Wow, I'm going to have to say it was Aretha Franklin. Ooh. Um, wow, you got to see her yeah, live. Yeah, 364 days before she was buried really? in the ground. Wow. Yeah. Holy smokes. Where was it? Or 60, 66. Yeah, like pretty much like a year. Yeah, Yeah. pretty much. 
Wow, yeah. where was it? It was at Ravinia in Chicago. Well, just on the outskirts of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like one of the most beautiful venues I've ever been to in America. Uh-huh. And yeah, just being there to absorb her magic and see her live was, it was like a bucket list type of thing. Yeah. And I was able to find a ticket. I was on tour. Um, I was doing a bunch of things on the East Coast that summer. And I was probably going to, I was probably there for like two months or like a full month. Mm-hmm. And I had to go do something in like Missouri or something. And yeah, so the I. timing and everything just worked out. Yeah, I just, I flew over there to Chicago. I spent like Memorial Day weekend. It was only one single ticket, like Roger, you know, okay, ABC. Yeah. Wow. It was pretty close to the stage. Oh, that's crazy. And I got to just absorb it all and just take it all in. That was like, it was my summer of music. I, mm-hmm. I saw Lady Gaga, oh. um, Nas, and um, Lauren Hill. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, so much. Yeah. Um, Erica Badu. Wow. Ben Harper twice, Dang. you know. Oh, it yeah. was just a really, really great summer of music. And that, for me, was the best concert that I, most memorable. Because she's no longer with us mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. And she's such a huge influence in, in my your, own yeah. life and my own music. Yeah. That's an amazing experience. You grew up experience. listening to her, mm-hmm. her songs, and then, wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was probably one of the last concerts ever that she did, right? I would say so, yeah. yeah. She was making it up. It was a makeup date from a concert that she had to cancel or oh, okay. postpone. Yeah, well, glad that yeah. all worked out. And I it's know. crazy that you found the ticket. And yeah, it was nice that, that you were already in the area. It was like just for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great for you. Mm-hmm. And you know what? At the end of the night, she left the stage and came back on, wadding herself with a um, a, a stack of hundred dollar bills, oh, fanning herself yeah. with a wad of hundred. Oh, like a queen! No. <laughs> She's like, and then she walked to the edge of the stage and she looked at everybody. She, no, she just threw it right out. She did. And I, the security guard was trying to hold me back. By that time, the <laughs> first three rolls were gone. Oh, so this is like way after her show already. Yeah, like two minutes after she left oh, the dang. stage or something. She came back on, but I wanted to listen to every note. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not there with anybody. Nobody's yeah. in a rush to make me leave. I can yeah. stay and enjoy it all, you know? And yeah, she, I was like, she just threw $100 bills. <laughs> he turned around. He went to the stage. Yeah. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I got guy. one. Yeah, yeah. He got two. You got like, one. You get it, oh, brother. Man. You get it. I hope it. you kept that. I do. I still have it. You still do? In my ukulele case. Wow. Oh, that's such an iconic yeah. memory and like... To be able to have something from it, and, yeah. And, oh, that's- I still have the ticket stub and the set list because the because at that level people want your set list, yep. and mm-hmm. so they print extras just for the fans. Oh, wow. And it was in cardstock, not just okay. like regular yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah. Like wow, oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> wow, like that sounds so people. magical. <laughs> it what really was. It, yeah. Wow. So. Back to our <laughs> rapid fire questions. What's one thing people might not know about you? That I'm socially awkward. Yeah, <laughs> I are am. You? No. Yeah, I am. Um, when there's a lot of people, I get like, kind of like anxious a little bit, and then I'm like, ah, people, you know. Yeah, yeah. It just, I think it's a uh, when you're tapped into like a different source of energy. I feel like, um, like for me, I don't know how to turn it off. Mm-hmm. Like, like mm-hmm. when I go on stage, I open myself up and mm-hmm. it's this energetic thing. It's a mm-hmm. spiritual thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, then when I get off the stage, sometimes I forget how to turn, how to like close myself up and mm-hmm. like bring it back in. Yeah. And that's something that I'm learning right now. Like I'm currently learning that because like it can really like feel, it just feels it just feels different, especially if you're like an empath, like mm-hmm. like I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which me, I feel things a lot deeper than everybody. From every every emotion, mm-hmm. I it's heightened for me. Like mm-hmm. my joy is extra mm-hmm. joyful. My sadness is so sad mm-hmm. and low. You yeah. know. Yeah. And it, it's like a thing that where you gotta like kind of like find balance and like. A lot of people, when when they meet me, they want to tell me like all their stories of like yeah. how their music affects them, and it's like really heavy and deep stories, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes it's like a lot, yeah, to be like, oh, yeah, because I can feel it, yeah. 
it's not just like I can't just separate myself from your story. Like I'll feel it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're really all yeah. the emotions, you know. Yeah. So That's I try to like be jokey most of my life, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, try to yeah. like not take things so seriously if I can, because yeah. like it's easy for me to like go from zero to a hundred yeah <laughs> so, I bet. well thank yeah. you for sharing that and anyway. that's why your music is so like it moves people like it has this like it's like a life of its own like even listening to your music coming over here i'm just like on the plane like crying i'm mm-hmm. like holy smokes like these emotions it's like so real it's like alive in yeah. your songs yeah one thing i really want to incorporate is i want to get like a phone and like at my shows i want to set up my camera with like a ring light Mm -hmm. in like a little area where people can come and like tell me what they want me to know testimonials because like yeah i don't often have a lot of time after the shows to like meet people or like Mm -hmm. people gotta go people have kids at home you know Mm -hmm. but like i really appreciate those stories so i'd like to eventually start collecting those like how did my music help you you know like then i feel like I give them an opportunity to share and mm-hmm. also myself the space to receive mm-hmm. whatever messages that they have for me in an environment where I'm prepared for it. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not like, right after oh the God. show, kind of, yeah, yeah. Like overwhelmed with everyone. Help, somebody yeah. help me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's real heavy, real yeah. heavy. I, Thank you for sharing. I and I'm sure you get that, it all yeah. the time because, like, yeah, like Kobe was saying, your music is very powerful and uh-huh. you write and sing and perform and, like, such a different place because you you're opening up your energy to everyone and inviting them in as well so i'm sure yeah. like after every show everyone's like trying to come up to you and like tell you these things and that, yeah. that would be a, that's a great idea actually mm-hmm. to like be able to capture that because you're giving them the space but then also giving you because i do care and i mm-hmm. do want yeah. to know but sometimes it's just like too quick too yeah. sudden and you know mm-hmm. i don't know Kinda how to like manage you, yeah. it yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Well, how do i separate myself from hearing a story without you know opening my heart to receive yeah. it you know because mm-hmm. yeah. like, i tried to close off my heart before and it didn't work mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it's hard. i literally burnt myself with coffee <laughs> oh no <laughs> like a third degree burn i have this oh, scar no. right here oh i was like i'm closing my heart off i got too much things to do in life <laughs> and then what happened and the next day i got literally. a third degree yeah. burn yeah. Oh, oh my gosh it was just like that's yeah. a big sign the like universe oh. telling you like no yeah don't, and then, don't do that I saw somebody and they I missed my appointment. It was like this uh uh like a spiritual guide person, mm-hmm. you know? And I swear I went into his office and he's like, I showed up like right when I was supposed to be done with my appointment. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, I really wanted to be here. I was up since five. Uh-huh. <laughs> like I would have been here if I knew. Yeah. Or whatever. And then um he's like, Whoa, you know the crazy thing is some I feel like something's stopping you, and I feel like you wrapped up your heart or something. I'm like, what? <laughs> I never said that. He yeah. told me. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I can't close my heart off. So yeah. like, that's something that you know people probably don't know about me. Like, well, and you know, going back to like what you're saying about being socially awkward, it's also yeah. like where your position in like life just walking around Hawaii, that must be so weird. Like, and we have friends that like, they're really like local celebrities and stuff. And I'm like, how do you deal with that? Like you are constantly people coming up to you and like taking pictures of you. And that's just not normal. So of course that's going to come with like a little bit of awkward. Well, you know, I understand that part. I don't mind the hellos and the highs and the passing bys. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's cool. Um, You know, also, I understand people just want to reciprocate, you know, whatever goodness they mm-hmm. receive mm-hmm. from the music. And they feel like they know you, they see you, totally. they see you on podcasts and yeah. yeah. interviews, they read your words, they come to your shows. Yeah. They hear your banter in between the songs, you know, so it's, I get it. Yeah. I'm a fan of music, too. Yeah. I'm yeah. A, and I'm a huge dork. Like, <laughs> I fangirl over my favorite people and I... Uh-huh. You know, like I say all the wrong things. I like no. if I get nervous, I I try too hard, and then I offend the person. I'm like, no, oh, God. God. <laughs> like, did I just say that? Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that you yeah. have those moments uh-huh. too. It's not just I do, I do. We're all human here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, at the beginning of the day, we are all human. Mm-hmm. You know, and if people can just understand that, and not 
put so much pressure, you know? Yeah. And the people that they <clears throat> look up to, you know? Like, yeah. hey, we're just humans, just like you. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're all just spiritual beings experiencing this physical world, yeah. you know, and trying to navigate it. Mm-hmm. And all the energy and good and bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Thank you. Okay. This was the last one. How would you describe this era in your life? <sighs> this is my golden era. Golden era. Golden era. I love, yeah. that. I love that. It's my someday. It's my one day I'm going to do that. It's today. It's right now. I love that. When I that. was younger and I said, oh, one day I'm going to do this and that. This is the day. Yeah. These are the days that I'm, I'm doing those things that I said that I would do one day this is my one day oh that oh, just gave me chicken, chicken yeah. skin. i love that oh, I, I love, love that. that oh yeah. what does that feel like to be in your your this golden day, era yeah you know you know the cool thing is there's so many there's yeah. so many eras to look forward to in life and this is that one day i'm doing the things that's gonna get me even to another place yeah. that's even better yeah uh-huh. That yeah. place is called your 50s. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good place to be. It's a good place to be, yeah, let me tell you. I'm 44 right now. I'm just getting into filmmaking. I, I yeah. know. We want to talk to you about that because mm-hmm. we're filmmakers. And yeah, that's so exciting what you have going on with that. I'm sorry. I'm like crying too. Like, oh, Aww. I feel so emotional too now. And but, it's, it's amazing to hear you say that it's your golden era because like... It's only July of this year, and you've done so much already. Mm-hmm. Just from the, just from January twenty twenty three, mm-hmm. so it's 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 so awesome to see all the things and all the things that are coming, and yeah, we're so excited. Yeah, and you just gotta pace yourself, uh-huh. you know. You set like I had my movie in my head for like over twenty years, wow. you know. And I said one day I'm gonna write this movie, one day I'm gonna make it, you know. And right now, this is that day. Like January, I. I was in Cinderella yep. at yeah. Diamond Head Fairy Theater. Godmother. How, yes. how was that experience? That was like your first time. Yes, it was my first time, but I said one day I'm going to be in Cinderella as the fairy godmother. Oh, very specific. And that was my one day. Very yes. specific. Whoa. Over 20 years ago. Amazing. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh-huh. Wow. I, I knew I couldn't be Cinderella, you know, <laughs> because I was like already 20 something when I had the notion, the notion to, to be to in it. it. Yeah. And so, yeah, lucky thing. I mean, 20-something years later, and, you know, I, I was the perfect age for it. How did, how did it feel, like, doing it and, like, checking I mean, cause it off? I mean, because you're on stage all the time, yeah, so that's, the, like, you're probably comfortable on stage, but in, like, such a different... Capacity, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, I have the very first read where the whole cast got together, uh-huh. and we all had to read our parts in the script. And I recorded the whole thing. <laughs> and oh my God, you guys. <laughs> it's different, huh? I listened to it the first time. And I was like, oh, hell no. It's horrible. It's terrible. It was like, was this my, person? Where, where, where did you go, Cinderella? <laughs> like that. Like, yeah, yeah. It was, it okay, was cue horrible. the tape. Cue the yeah, tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then one of the girls sitting next to me, she was one of the um, stepsisters. She said, have you ever done this before? I said, no, no. never. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, never, I've never done that before in my life. <laughs> I had to work hard on that, you know? Yeah. I did. I, I rehearsed. I practiced. I ran my lines with Cinderella, who's a wonderful actress. Her name mm. is Christine Clouveau. And... Just to be able to play that role and think of myself as a fairy godmother, you know, mm-hmm. like, who is she really? Mm-hmm. Well, she's an overprotective, sassy auntie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so like, so I, I was like, like, like that, that in my life. I got yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I used um, my niece, who I saw be born. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw her come into this world Special and take connection. her first breath, you know? Mm-hmm. So she's like... Um, the, sa- the same age as Cinderella, mm-hmm. and I sort of used her yeah. as um, my inspiration, like how I treated this girl, oh, Christine. Yeah. So I sort of honored her. She's yeah. like, she, I'm her fairy godmother. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just loved it. I love that. And you know what? I wasn't prepared for the heartbreak at the end of oh, a production. Sh- oh. My God. Oh, saying goodbye to the yeah, cast. Yeah, yeah. Or just 
Because how Dubai long was that the production? Thing, mm. Well, I think we were preparing, and from the preparation to the end of the show, probably about five months. Oh yeah, that's oh, a wow. that's a big. Yeah. And then a run. I think our run was about a month long, four weeks. So that's a long time with this group of people. And mm-hmm. Yeah, it was such a wonderful experience. Mm. Um, the cast, they were phenomenal, and um, I've been going and checking out their other production since Mm -hmm. then so i like it i like supporting them and i told them i was like i'll see you when you're on the stage i'll come to your show yeah Yeah. (laughs) do you have are you gonna come back i'm like no i'm good yeah i was gonna ask if you have any (laughs) desire to join any other productions no not really shucks i think my contact is coming oh yeah i think it's out it's out is it out yeah let me give you no no i can get it in You got it. <laughs> I have a mirror. You need a oh mirror. Oh my gosh. No. Te- we got technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> you just cut that. The struggle. <laughs> the struggle is real. I could never do contacts because I could not, couldn't put things. So I have good vision, but I wanted to do like color contacts at one <laughs> oh, point. Oh yeah. But I was like, I couldn't get it in my eye and I don't think I ever I know, could. touching your eyeball yeah. is like a do you wear superpower. No. No, yeah, yeah. I could never do that either, like touch the eye. She just got it on the spot. You could just stop crying. <laughs> oh. It would be fine. <laughs> um, yeah. So pick up from Cinderella. Uh, Cinderella production yeah. ending and like. And no. that was a brand new. I mean, I never been. I haven't been to a production yet since they reopened the theater. Mm-hmm. But it was the new theater, right? For the yes, it was actually the first production oh, in the wow. new theater. Oh, wow. So it was a historical run. Yeah. You know uh-huh. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Have you seen it? The, um, no, the I haven't seen theater? the new theater. No, not yet. Yeah. Well, they're opening another show this week, Beauty and the Beast. Oh, Ooh. wow. Oh, another classic. Oh, so yeah. I'm going to go see it. The girl who has the lead, her name is Emily, and she is Belle. Mm-hmm. But uh-huh. she was my dresser for Cinderella. Oh. She'd like, get my shoes ready me and she she dressed me and cinderella and the queen we shared a dressing room uh-huh. it was so good and anyway i'm really excited to go see her oh look at and, her uh, now oh so she was behind the scenes for that yeah. production uh-huh. now she's the lead yes oh wow, wow. that's amazing oh that's yeah. gonna be fun yeah. for you to see uh-huh. her and like reconnect with all the cast yeah um so after cinderella you went on tour i mean you've had like an epic seven months of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good fun. <laughs> yeah. I launched a company, Monowahine yes, Productions. Yes. I needed to do that in order to, you know, when I have other events, mm-hmm. I can, like, I can, you know, produce it myself. And, you know, I, I had to do a show myself. Nobody wanted to produce it or promote it at all. Nobody wanted to sign up for it. So you're like, I'll I did my it. Aretha Franklin tribute. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then I pretty much. They said I could say that I sold out, but I don't over exaggerate. I'm like, no, we sold 975 tickets. Oh, yeah. Of like 1,100 mm-hmm. tickets. Wow. So it's like close to sell out. Wow. You know, but kind of like an event company. Absolutely. Putting on big events. Yeah, like a just one that I don't have to say. Paula Fuga presents Paula Fuga. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For real. Okay. And it's not like a label. I'm not trying to take people under my wing and teach them. I'm like still learning, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just for me, for my concerts that I want to throw, that I want to be a part of. That makes you know? sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. a production company for my own self. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And, you know, of course, I'll incorporate other vahine mm-hmm. in, in it, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not like a thing where I just, I'm not like, you know, Hawaii's finest or like trying mm-hmm. to like plan concerts. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. You know, like do that kind of it's thing. It's something you've been wanting to do for yourself for a while. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And like I'm good at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, picking the the artist like for, for the feeling. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. It's good. Yeah, it's fun when yeah. you get to curate it. Me and, and my and, little team. Yeah, yeah. go to it with your team. Nice. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you about, um, I know you're super involved with EM Tonki's homecoming concert and just like being a part of that team, like cheering him on with the um, like music video and things like that. And it's your 20, 20th year since your audition. Mm-hmm. Did, did it feel like familiar with him being on American Idol? Um, you know, honestly, 
I, I really didn't, I wasn't really thinking about myself and all of that. Mm -hmm. I, I was just excited to be able to help put something together at the last minute and help welcome this boy who all of Hawaii has embraced, you know, mm -hmm. and has fallen in love with. And he's just 18 years old, you know, from the North Shore, from mm -hmm. Kahuku. Mm -hmm. I, I live in Pupukea. So um, all my nieces and nephews are like, are, are for L, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cultural advisor at Turtle Bay. Okay. So it was just like a perfect fit. I hit yeah. up Subaru to throw in some dough yeah. to help contribute for the event. And and yeah, and after doing all of that, and Kavika Kahiapo hit me up to sing with him and Jack, and I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of just all fell into place, but... You know, Kimie and her company helped produce uh, the song that we did, um, "Country Take Me Home, Country yeah, Road. Mm -hmm. So that was really sweet. I was actually was on so tour special. at that time and oh, okay. sent my video in from California. But, um, yeah, it was so sweet to see all the love and support that he's received. And, you know, yeah, I just look forward to watching him grow and just, you know, hope that he um has finds the right people mm -hmm. that you know to like help him along his journey it seems like he's gotten a a bunch of like local artists to kind of embrace him mm -hmm. too and help him and like 18 so young you know i'm like mm -hmm. he seems so mature and i'm like oh yeah he's just he's just he a just teenager. graduated he's high school a, <laughs> just a kid yeah but. he is just a kid and so, you know, it's kind of, like, disheartening to see people complain about, like, things that he, like... Oh, yeah, I saw the that. The thing that he, he did, you know, like, how he had his hands in his pocket. I'm like, he's a Come child. Come on, yeah. I know. Yeah. Chill yeah. out, guys, yeah. you know? Those little things. It's like, as a, you know, people in Hawaii want to protect him in, yeah. in that way. So, you know, yeah. yeah, hopefully he doesn't let it get... Mm -hmm. Get him down and take those things too seriously, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody's gonna have an opinion. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. He seems like he's on the right path, though. Yeah, he seems so he's got the right genuine. sentiment. Yeah, you know, he's got the right heart. Yeah, and his his family surrounding him, mm -hmm. you know, all the time. I think that's he's gonna be good. You know? Yeah, right on. Um, so on the way over here, we got like the email about your big Alaska tour. Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> well, awesome. first of all, it's little. <laughs> it's literally three shows. But um, we're going to be up there, and we get to go visit some Native Alaskan communities. So oh, that's, that's really awesome. cool. Oh, nice. cool. Some indigenous people. Yeah. Share our music with them and, you know. Do you have a connection to Alaska? Or did mm -hmm. it, they just reach out to you and you're like, yeah, shoot, that sounds good. You know what? I was supposed to do something um, in Alaska during the pandemic, like okay. in 2020. So this is actually a makeup oh, okay. um, thing that I'm doing right now. Yeah. Going over there. It's, it's going to be cool because there's a lot of Hawaii connection to Alaska. I mean, my husband went to school there. We have a bunch of friends there. We know a bunch of people who had to who were forced to move there um, during the pandemic, but there's so many local like ties to Alaska. and There are. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. I have some classmates that moved there too. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Leha Hill, do you know her? Yeah, I know Leha. We filmed her wedding. Oh. So Kamaka's sister-in-law, right? Yes, yeah, Kamaka's yeah. sister-in-law. So they went to, she went to school or lived in Alaska mm -hmm. for a little while or something like that. Yeah. Um, have you been before? Yes, nice. I have. I went during the month of May and it snowed. Oh, what? Oh, oh yeah. It's like, I felt so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> also, I hear that the Aurora Borealis mm -hmm. is going to be visible from That's right. more states oh. within the United States. So I did hear about it's going to like, you know, I'm going to be up there during that season. Oh, and I'm just nice. like, please. Yeah. I know. 
Please, <laughs> universe, <laughs> please let me see that. Oh, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. I hope so. Yeah. I hope my good karma is so good that it just <laughs> shines, that. shines all these colorful <laughs> lights on me. Oh, yeah. that would be that's such an experience list. to see. That's a bucket list item yeah, for me as well. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm really hoping I get to see that while we're up there. And we're manifesting yeah. it for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna. You already it, saw it. You already yeah, saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, and and so you Everybody knows about your music, and you know you're, you're you love to write and all that. But tell us about this this new passion of yours. Like, or I guess you've always been passionate about, it, but like now you're acting on it. Like you know your new film and and everything you're working on right now. Oh yeah, you know I'm getting ready to. We're gonna be start starting to film in a couple of weeks. Oh, exciting! Oh, exciting. This movie that I've had in my head for like over twenty years, mm-hmm. and um, it's a small part of a bigger story. Mm-hmm. And um, I was inspired when I when I got to attend the HIF. Um, premiere mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in 2021 mm-hmm. and uh yeah i attended with nmg yep. mm-hmm. and i was just so inspired by all the different native hawaiian filmmakers mm-hmm. telling their stories you know and i i i was i i made a i set up a meeting with gerard and i was like yo gerard you have this meeting he's like yeah <laughs> i'm like okay i have this idea yeah and I'm sure he thought, no, he didn't, he oh. wasn't prepared uh-huh. for what I was going to say. And I told him about my movie. He's like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, yeah. It's very yeah. I, I didn't even, I had no idea. I thought it was going to be like a music video or something. I'm like, oh yeah, Gerard, no, no. I'm, my mind's bigger than music videos. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Chill I'm, out. I'm in my film Back era. it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you my epic movie that I've had in my mind for 20 years, man. And he's like, yeah, we could totally do it. I was like, I want to tell a smaller part of it, though. And he's like, totally, we could do it. And so I got, he got Mitchell. Yep. He's my classmate. He's awesome. What? Yeah. Yeah. Mitchell Merrick to um, direct it and help write the script out. And we pitched it to... Pacific Islanders in Communication, yeah. and we Big won a grant. Out. Yeah, yeah. Nice. we nice. won a grant, and you know, and we're we're gonna make a film. Mm. We just got our first check last week. Oh, yeah. It clears it's in like then. a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it clears in another week. Yeah. But how, <laughs> how does that feel though? Like you know, having this idea in your head for over twenty years, and like finally taking like the the steps towards like. You get you guys film next week. That's crazy. So I want to say shout out to Central Pacific Bank. Yeah. Because that's where I deposited the check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, EBB. Maybe, like, let's clear it faster. Kukini <laughs> Studios LLCs got a bank account here at CPB. Yeah. Nice. It just so happens. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, hey, that's all the connection. Magic this is yeah. my bank. Yeah. This is yeah. my bank. Nice. 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 Um, Can you tell us a little bit about it? Like. Don't. Yes, so okay. the short film mm-hmm. is yeah. called Kukini. It's a story about this um, runner, this uh, swift, fast runner. Just try. It's a it's a fictional character mm-hmm. set in a historical period of time in Hawaii's history. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's about this guy trying to get home to his family and like these big dudes these like scary dudes are just like on his trail and trying to like kill him you know oh. it's him trying to like survive this uh you know this journey home yeah survive this journey home mm-hmm. so like he has an important message to deliver he's entrusted with um bringing back the news or like mm-hmm. the message from like a battle you know? Oh, okay. So what time frame is this is this set in? Like in the eight in the seventeen hundreds. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where did the idea come from? Where do you think? When I was a kid, I used to hear about these kukini and all these like different methods of warfare and, and like booby traps or whatever. And I was always like curious about it. Then one day as an adult, I was in a Hawaiian studies class 
And I learned that the way the kukini were able to deliver their ali's favorite fre- fish still fresh and alive was that they would go to a place, <clears throat> get the fish, wrap it with some type of limu, then wrap it with tea leaf, and then they would run it back. Run it back. And the of course, because the fish was still alive mm-hmm. from the water mm-hmm. in the tea leaf. Oh, so from they the had to limu. run super fast. To yeah, get it back alive. but I never knew how they were able to do it until I was an adult. I just knew that they could, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I didn't know how. And so knowing how they did that was so cu- interesting to me. I thought, oh, my God, like people need to know about these mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. you know. And I was like, one day, I was like, how? How do we tell them? And I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, a movie. I was like, oh, okay, one day I'm going to make this movie about this kukini. I'm like he's gonna run and do this fish thing. I'm like, and then what? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. then what is he gonna do? I had twenty min, twenty years to build this story in uh-huh. my head, and so I had like his whole background, where he came from, nice. where he 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 came from Maui. He went to Honolulu to train to become one kukini. You know, uh-huh. he moved back, and he got enlisted into this battle. You know, mm-hmm. and so like this is the story about this. Kini, but the way that I got the idea was because I wanted to tell those little details that nobody really thinks about mm-hmm. when you think of these big legends or these mm-hmm. mo'olelo. Mm-hmm. You hear somebody did this or that, but you don't know how they did it. And yeah. I want to show that. I want to sh- illustrate that. I want that to be like a third character in yeah. all of my movies. Yeah. Um, I want to show people beating kappa, people stripping it, the yeah. bark, you know, people yeah. like in the background, in conversation, yeah. in whatever. Yeah. You could be sitting in the front or like seeing people in the front, but like also seeing people in the back do stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, drying yeah. the kappa, whatever uh-huh. it is. Yeah. Like, Oh, I can see like, you, you know? just like see the vision in your head. Yeah. Like, you see it coming together. Yeah. That must be so exciting. And then um, how was, like, the, the writing and the casting process and all that? Was that, like, fun and exciting? Did you find, How long did it take you to find your kukini? Um, well, to be honest, we found him before we started casting. Oh, nice. Yeah. Because I was going to say, you had, like, this vision of this man in your head. You know, so it's like, how did you, how did you find that? Very specific character. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, we have to draw from the pool of talent that mm-hmm. we have available here in mm-hmm. Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that I want to build on and support the prog- progression of mm-hmm. people and their skills and their acting abilities here in Hawaii because mm-hmm. we need to tell our own stories, you mm-hmm. know. It's really important. And I think that we have all the necessary people, the, the skills here in the islands already mm-hmm. because Hollywood utilizes them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Hollywood comes here and utilizes all our people for for their films and mm-hmm. it's like we need to start doing our own yeah you know yeah we There's need so to start telling our already. own yeah yeah and yeah. so we the thing is the talent and the pool of actors that we have available to us here is limited you know mm-hmm. they all come from Long Beach, Los Angeles, California, because Hollywood is there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot more Polynesians that are in tune to that um, acting life or yeah. like commercials or anything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, And there's so many resources. It's easy to like just sign up for, mm-hmm. like to be a part of this agency Absolutely. or whatever. I mean, there's you so can many. drive there instead of like having to fly yeah. out and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. there's more opportunities there, but like the talent <clears throat> here is... So what we need to do, the acting talent, the people, the looks, we need to start encouraging people. Creating Mm -hmm. the opportunities Come out, act, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I, honestly, the casting agent that is helping us, um, I think she's a casting director, Mm -hmm. Akemi. Oh, yep. So she said that for this movie, Kukini, there hasn't been a bigger, like, it was the biggest response they oh, nice. ever received wow. for a short film in Hawaii. Oh, that's amazing. And I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved yeah. casting. I love seeing some bratas come out. Yeah, you know, yeah. they never did this before, <laughs> yeah. but they tried, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. that's all you got to do. Yeah. You got to yeah. go out and try and, and put your energy into something because mm-hmm. you never know. Like, it's like the thought is like a seed and your action is like the water, you know, that 
waters that seed in order for it to grow. You cannot just like hope and dream. Hope it grows, yeah. You know, you gotta like do you gotta do something. Yeah. You gotta like um move. You have to like take action. Yeah, take yeah. action and nurture. And that even seed. though if you don't get get it, at least you went through that process of going out and trying. So next time something comes again, you'll know better what to do. You'll know what to expect. You'll be a le- less nervous. Exactly. And then yeah. I want to work on, um, I want to work on um, building that pool of talent. So like mm-hmm. coming up with workshops or like, you know, things where people can come and like participate, sign up, mm-hmm. get your picture taken, yeah. like add your face to like a casting pool, you know, yeah. Like yeah. just, just so people knows what yeah. look yeah. what you look like. Yeah, yeah. there's like, so know? many people out. Like, yeah, out and we need all the looks. Yeah, yeah. All we the need looks. all the looks. We need the beautiful bikini models. We need the like homeless, cracky looking one <laughs> people. <laughs> you know, like anybody, yeah. the everyone, hippies, yeah. the the farmers, the pretty boys, the surfers, uh-huh. anything. You yeah. know, but to be able to have that pool and like create those opportunities. Yeah, that's and then, be huge. yeah. Like most guys probably don't even have a headshot. Like no. Send me your headshot. What is that? <laughs> like selfie a selfie. Photo? Yeah. You know, just like the So I want to be able to like help people do that because, you know, it's intimidating mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes, you mm-hmm. know. I want, I want I want to have like I want to have a workshop and then like run everybody through all the things. Like, yeah. okay, headshot or like yeah. maybe like barber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You said Make it. You said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Headshot. And then headshot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Realistically, yeah. thinking about it. But yeah, like. The short film is just the beginning then. Yeah. yeah. You're going to create so many opportunities. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I love hearing you. I I was listening to you talk about, like, your inspiration for filmmaking and just telling Native Hawaiian stories. And it's like setting my heart on fire, honestly, because I was like, I just finished. Uh, my first full length doc, and it's about wow. Kupuna. It's called Hometown Legends. Okay. And uh, it's about um, like five legendary Kupuna on Hawaii Island, and they all have their own like meahana, their practices that they learn from their Kupuna. Do you have a Kupuna that you're super inspired by? Like whether it's one of your Kupuna or somebody that I you do. met? I do. His name is Uncle Calvin Ho. He comes from Waiahole. Okay. And, or Hakipu'u. And he's just like, Super sweet uncle. I go check him out whenever, you know. He's like my friend. He's like my friend's dad, but also my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He makes nose flutes and, uh, you know, those kind of hula implements. Mm-hmm. He made it for over twenty years up at Kamehameha Schools. Oh wow! wow. So if you ever been to explorations, their explorations or in yeah. the seventies, eighties, nineties, you guarantee had. Your nose flute was made by Uncle Calvin Ho. Right. And your little... Oh, yeah. I was there in the 90s. Yeah, your and little I have um, my board nose flute. Mm-hmm. With the... Um, he put um, string yeah, and... Yeah, and you hang it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that Uncle Calvin made that too. Oh, yeah, wow. His family. Yeah. And he's just such a sweetheart. He, and he, his wife, Auntie Sharon... She's like super smart. She started Hockey Pool Learning Center. Oh, nice. With him, they did it together. And um, she he credits her for stopping, for saving the water that flowed directly to like that side of the island. Mm-hmm. Oh, hole. Mm-hmm. They were trying to divert it to the west side for the golf courses. Oh. And so she, it was her. He credits her as the one that saved the water. Wow. Oh, that's so amazing. Sweet. I just yeah. had lunch with him a couple weeks ago, and he told me then it was her. She the one that nice. did that. Nice. I love that. Yeah. I, I love I love hearing uh, talking with Kupuna and like just even just Kupuna stories, like hearing about Uncle Calvin. Because then it's like it. Um, somebody told me one time, it's like you know, like talking about Kupuna and like the old ways of doing things. It kind of balances out the way that the world seems to be going, where it's like so fast and they're going towards AI and all this technology, but the kupuna will help balance it if we can keep elevating their voices, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Sharing their stories. Yeah. He's so smart, man. And the thing that I love about him is he tries to express his thoughts or his feelings in as few words as possible. Yeah, uh, that's how, I love yeah. That. yeah. I love that. 
in the most basic and simplest terms. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know, point, yeah. even though he's an intelligent man with like, you know, college degrees and I'm sure a wide vocabulary, you know, mm-hmm. he just uncle. Yeah. Uncle just tries to like simplify it all. And I love that. I, I love that. I look up to him and I, What's, Hope one day to be like Uncle Cal. <laughs> what's what's one piece of advice or anything that you've you like that connects you to him that like kind of like inspires you like every day or like something that you, you <clears throat> remember? Well, I got to work at Hockey Pu'u Learning Center oh, nice. and they have uh their motto or their um Olelo Noel that guides them and the school is Makahana Kaike, mm. which means knowing is in doing Mm -hmm. or the the knowledge is in the work is in the Mm -hmm. hana Mm -hmm. and i feel like that's the thing that stands out the most for me when i'm thinking about uncle calvin and his ohana and and some advice that they they they've given to me or, or a lesson that i learned from them you know and and that's just you need to be willing to go out and try if you mm-hmm. want to learn. You yeah. know, if you want to yeah. learn something, go do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you'll learn it. That's the only way. Yeah. yeah, you know, with your hands, if you want to, you know, figure out how to do something. Yeah, you know, it's it's in the doing By of it. Mm-hmm. Doing yeah, it. it's it's so important, especially like for the next generation, and just like what you were talking about, like the actors and like all the talent here in Hawaii. You just got to do it, mm-hmm. experience it, and get yourself out there. And oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, because you can prepare and watch YouTube videos yeah. and all that, but until you go and experience it in real life for yourself, this when mm-hmm. you're going to probably mm-hmm. learn the most. It's the right. beauty of like learning from it, too. Yeah. yeah, and that, just the act of doing it will open up more doors and, like, you know, make connections with mm-hmm. the right people. Get into a... Love that. Yeah, a short film, you know? Okay, <laughs> 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 part two. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, so besides your film, is there anything else you're super excited that's coming up? I know you have something at Blue Note. Yes, um, August 12th and 13th. I have um, two shows each night at Blue Note. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, You know, last year I did my Aretha Franklin tribute, so Mm -hmm. that was cool. So I I thought, you know, I'm going to do something different. I'm just going to do my music Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, embrace embrace the beauty of my of the songs i've written and like share those things because you know what my lesson this year is i am enough Mm -hmm. Mm. you know Mm -hmm. that i'm enough my music is enough people want to come to see me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they don't need you know any bells or whistles Mm -hmm. if i just come with all of me that's what they came to see totally what 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 kind of I guess like things helped you get to that point of realization because I'm sure a lot of people like battle with that, right? Like that thought of like, am I enough or like I need to do more? But like, what was it for you that was kind of like, I am enough, you know? Ticket sales. Yes. Oh, Ticket sales. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, just nine hundred yeah, something. Just nine seventy five. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Not that. Like, um, you know, I just noticed that people. They just truly want to just see me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't need, you know, a 13-piece band. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. They're not here for that. Uh-huh. They're here for me, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I just, I realized that. I'm like, oh, okay. Let's, let's, let's try it. it. Yeah, let's see how it. that goes. Oh my gosh, uh-huh. yes. uh-huh. so yeah. many people who just follow you on Instagram, like go to your concerts, mm-hmm. just say amazing things about you and yeah Yeah. you know what i think at my i think at my blue note show i'm gonna set up that little camera you should yeah Yeah. Yeah. oh andrew has he can help me out with that i I actually (laughs) just started something where it's like a video toast booth like that really yeah so when you said that i was like oh i'll hit her up after yeah 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 yeah. no it'll it'll be perfect for your show (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah, okay cool (laughs) Yeah. yeah um We'll talk more about yeah, that. Yeah, I'll, re- I'll record the messages for you and you can watch it in a safe space. But that's exciting. Yeah. Um, and so um, are you are you working on any new music? And, you know, it's like... Well, you know, I'm constantly yeah, writing songs, um, whether it's little melodies or lyrics or ideas for songs. Mm-hmm. I have my um, 
you know, my iPhone. Yeah, I'll just like just do it on my voice memos, oh, voice memos, you know? And if there's any like particular lyrics that I have to write down and I don't have a m- melody for, I'll write it down. Mm. Like I'll like, type it out in my notes. And um, do you notice like when those like moments of inspiration come? I know like as artists, people will ask like wh- what inspires you or whatever. But do you notice that those moments of inspiration come at like a common time or like if you go to a certain place or if you're doing something or is it super just random? Super <laughs> random. Super yeah. random. Yeah. And always like if I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing something and then something <laughs> like, pops in my head. I'm like, oh, I got to go sing this. Or like sometimes I'm with people meeting. and I'll be like, hey, <laughs> you know, because I don't want them to hear me or see me or like take a walk or like excuse myself real quick. You know, because like I got to get it down. If I don't, I'll forget about it. Yeah. And I'll lose it. And then, oh, gosh, nothing like a lost, you know, Thought. song. Yeah. Idea. yeah. You know? Lyric. Yeah. yeah. Like, ah, oh, shucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> and then you always try to remember. It's like, oh, I don't have it. I can yeah. never yeah. remember. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's mm-hmm. hard. Yeah, I can't imagine. I'm not yeah. even a writer, but I can't even imagine. Because, yeah, it's, like, so random sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, in the shower. I feel like if anywhere I get, like, good ideas in, like, the shower or right driving. Before bed. Right before bed or, like, Before bed. For you, I'm, like, usually dead <laughs> right before bed. I'm, like, no thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, are, what are some other, other tools that, you know, you kind of use to just, like, find that balance that we kind of talked about earlier? You know, like, do you... Do you do any meditations? Or are you talking about like being very spiritual as well? Like, um, what what kind of things do you kind of do just to like help you balance, get through mm-hmm. the, your busy? Well, I love schedule? swimming. Oh yes, I love snorkeling. Ooh. It's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I wake up early. I love the walking morning. at like five a.m. Uh-huh. It's like my it's favorite. Like the, the best time to go walk. Yeah. It's like when the world is still asleep. Or working out like uh-huh. really yeah. early in the morning. I'm one of those people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's nice. Start kick off the day early. Yeah. When I, like I do that, morning. it's like it's good because then you like get the most out of it. You just feel so I don't know, alive. Mm-hmm. Refreshed. Yeah. Before mm-hmm. the sun comes up mm-hmm. even. Well now the sun's coming up early. But yeah, I like that early morning. It's like everything's still quiet. Kids are the still sleeping. The earth is still cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you're like ready for your day at mm-hmm. seven AM. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I love I take I take the time to do the things that bring m- me joy. Mm-hmm. I make sure I do that. I make sure I do the things that um, nourish my spirit and my soul, whether that's people just being around certain people or like, um, you know, being outside under the stars or just like stopping and enjoying whatever, like a wind or the stars or like a sound you know mm-hmm. just like or watching watching people you know just yeah. enjoy their lives like yeah. in passing yeah yeah i make sure to notice all those things you mm-hmm. know i notice the clouds or like i, I pay attention to those things sunsets mm-hmm. yeah like and I, I, I listen like, to oh, so your so podcast so with kamako where you talked about like just like stopping everything and listening at the uh, to the rain and that was like an inspiration to one of the songs. The too. whole so, album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's amazing. Um, and that's like very refreshing. Yeah. That's probably as an empath, you probably need that, you know, like that time of like <sighs> slow it down and not have so many things just like consume you. Because mm-hmm. you, if you're feeling everything, then you probably need to like be able to also like let things go and... For sure, you know, and, you know, as an adult and realizing that a lot of the things that we get stuck on is comes from our childhood. Mm -hmm. So healing those things, too. And realizing that, you know, as adults, we are responsible for healing Mm -hmm. those wounds that if there are any those wounds that we've experienced as child as Mm -hmm. children those inner child wounds is our responsibility to heal as adults. Yeah. And right. just understanding that and like, oh, okay. It's you know? crazy, right? It's like a lifelong journey mm-hmm. of healing because even things that 
you might not even consciously know that mm-hmm. hurt you or you, you know scarred you. You don't even realize, you don't you even realize but like 40 years later, here we are dealing with this emotion that happened mm-hmm. like when I was six years old. I like yeah, what somebody, triggers something, you? Yeah, something triggers it. I'm like, wow, I do remember that. Like mm-hmm. that poor kid, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then being yeah. able to recognize it and then working towards healing. Yeah. Or like rewiring your mind yep. around it, you mm-hmm. know, like changing your perception of it you know or whatever you know like i always say optimism is my self defense mechanism Mm -hmm. because as an empath i don't have time to be sad about stuff you Mm -hmm. know like it'll get me real sad sad. i'm sadder than most people Mm -hmm. and so i try not to stay down for long and try to like quickly wrap my mind around things and like process things get to the root of it because if not i'll sit here and wonder why you know, yeah. but like I'm, e- I can easily get to the root of anything. Yeah. Because I'm just so I try to just be real honest with myself. You know, like because you know what I mean. Like if you're not honest with yourself, gosh, I don't know. How can you help yourself? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You no, be- I know. I mean, a lot of people aren't just trying to cover it up, though. Mm-hmm. You know, and I probably did that for like most Me of too. my life. You just like cover it up and like, okay, I'll you know like deal with that later <laughs> and then just like keep covering and then but it's like you can't run away from it it's yeah. like the foundation it's like under all those layers right it's, it's so like yeah. um old clothes you need to throw away for, yeah. like because they have holes and they <laughs> don't fit you anymore yeah, yeah. but they you just keep keeping them and yeah. then you put them in your closet you put them in your closet and then one day you're like god my closet is bursting with all these clothes <laughs> and i don't have room for yeah, new yeah, yeah. clothes yeah. Yeah. or oh another God. house on another <laughs> island yeah, yeah. Yeah. another closet yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly so and then you have to go through your closet and pull out all those things you knew you should have threw away four years ago yeah. oh you know God. what i mean you're just kind of so, putting it off yeah so like so those true. shoes those flats that are like too flat <laughs> yeah yeah don't even, you even put your feet yeah. in yeah. anymore <laughs> But you still have them in your closet. Yeah. Just, I might use it case. one day. Just yeah. in case. Yeah. 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 Just in case. And then you never do. But um, yeah, it's That's like that. So like true. dealing with it when it happens is like mm-hmm. throw, dealing with your emotions as you feel them. To me, feels like getting rid of the junk when you know that there it's junk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of holding on to it. Because then, you know, I don't know. I feel like it's just... Because then you can't, then easier. you don't have room for the the, the new stuff, stuff and the blessings, yeah, yeah coming mm-hmm. in. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good yeah. metaphor. That's actually, yeah, that's a good metaphor. Uh huh. Cleaning out your closet, everyone. Clean out your closet. Go get rid. Just donate it all to Goodwill. Yeah. I'm yeah. such a like Gosh. in my older years. I'm like such a purger. I'm just like get rid of it all. Yeah. I think after having kids, I'm like just get rid of everything. However, do you have daughters? Mm-hmm. Two. You just have to save some things for them. Yeah. Those one yeah. of a kind things. Yeah. They have something. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. The dresses I'm talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Clothes. I know. I'm like, one day this old Manuhe Ali'i will come back around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They'll use this one day. Yeah. 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 Just put it in their closet already. <laughs> yeah. So it still frees up your room. No, you yeah. just never know what fashion, yeah. you know, yeah. especially Hawaiian fashion. Yeah. I feel like that, you know. Yeah. I love vintage mm-hmm. aloha. Yeah, no, that's true. That, like, it's going to be made vintage one day. Vintage mm-hmm. mo- yep. moves came, made a comeback big mm-hmm. time. Oh, okay. Um, for the rest of 2023, you're super busy. Is there anything else you're super looking forward to besides all those things? Your yeah. film? This is your th- your you? one day era. So like, what, what else are you checking off that list? Oh my gosh. Yeah. You that know, you can share. <laughs> your golden era. Well, it will go into 2024 for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My era is not by year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's by like a huge few years, uh-huh. yeah. a chunk yeah. of time. So this yeah. is just the beginning. Yeah. Um, what else? Is there something that you're like manifesting for maybe even 2024 that you are excited about? Nothing that I can speak about at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to have you back on again yeah, yeah. when it's about to come up. <laughs> we're, well, we're super excited to hear about all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any advice? I mean, I, I, I think you 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 kind of mentioned it um, about like the, the healing and you gave so many good sound bites and, and advice. But it's like if there was one thing you could say to someone um, listening, um, whether they're in the situation of music or um, doing something they've been thinking about for a while, you know, mm-hmm. like what, what kind of advice would you give? Gosh, so much advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet. 
Well, 100%, what you put out into the universe comes back to you 10 times more, whether it was good or bad. So make sure you keep doing good things that, you know, you help people when they need it, if you're able to, that you are kind to people because when you're kind to people, people want to be around you, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it's true, like, you know, like, so do good things and good things will follow, like, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what, if you just, you know, try to be a good person, then I think you'll be good. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's simple, but so true. You know, I always say that everybody on earth is born with a gift and it's our responsibility to determine what that gift is and use it to benefit our lives, um, our family and our community, you know? Mm -hmm. And whatever that gift is, it's it. some people, like I have a niece, she was always such a good nurturer, mm -hmm. you know? She always wanted to take care of the babies and you know, I knew one day she'd be a good mother, and she is. She's a great mother, you know. Aww, like, she's, yeah. she's an amazing little mama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, whatever your gift is, because it takes all of us and all of our different interests to make the world go round. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the differences in people that make the world go round. So we need all the different talents and skills from all of us to come together like a community and you know, have balance mm -hmm. and yeah. help each other, you know? Yeah, I, I love, love that, that yeah. because I think, like how you said, I mean, people look at you and you're like, obviously her gift was singing and like bringing music into this world, but like for somebody who doesn't have that gift and like they're like I don't know I mean I think about like my husband he's I'm like always like what's your passion what's your passion and he's like I don't have any passions like yeah I mean but he loves dirt bikes like that's mm -hmm. his passion and so I'm like okay we need to be teaching other kids not just our kids how to ride dirt bikes and like they have like a track now and he brings our kids friends around and teaches them about mm -hmm. dirt bikes and how to do it safely and stuff and I'm like and, and he, he found, loves it yeah and he loves it like that's the only thing he yep. thinks about honestly. I'm mm -hmm. like, I see him on Instagram just watching dirt bike <laughs> reels, and mm -hmm. I see his um, Amazon cart, all dirt bike stuff. <laughs> that's like his passion. Yeah. I'm like, his oh. gift, yeah, yeah. I'm like, maybe you know. So it doesn't have to be something like epic, like being a rock star. Or, right, you know, like absolutely. It could, mm -hmm. be, it could be building houses. Yeah. You know, I have students that was like. You know, auntie, one day I'm going to be on carpenter. I'm going to build you a house, you know? <laughs> like Love that, that kind, yeah. you know? Like, right on. That's good. People want to be mechanics. People want to be yeah. fishermen. People yeah. want to be boat, you know, captains, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's Cooks, all great. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. everything. People are just naturally interested in different things, mm -hmm. and that's great, you yeah. know? And so, the world needs so, that. Yeah, yeah, we need all the different levels of things, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just no. paying attention to things mm -hmm. that, like, light you up. You know, right, that you things, and I'll give you a hint, in case you never know, your gift is the thing that you like to do the most, mm -hmm. or the thing that you're the best at, yeah. of all the things that you can do, yeah. you know, yeah. usually over the, in that area. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, advice right that's there. good yep. advice. Yeah, yeah. Just in case, in case just you never hint. know. Yeah, yeah. In case you in never case know. You didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Here's a hint. Yeah. It's something you enjoy doing. <laughs> something that you do often and you love it. <laughs> well, some people don't even take the time to really think about those mm -hmm. things, you know, like just get stuck in that routine of nine to five and just coming home and, you know, just you and know, give themselves the space yeah. to enjoy. The and you don't enjoy. have to do it to make money at it. Right. You don't have to do it as a career. Right. If you just do it in your own life, yeah. you'll just bring so much enjoyment yeah. you know, to your own self. You, if you do something that sparks your soul, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and then that fire. in turn will like bring joy to other people mm -hmm. around you as well. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's, uh, that's another good piece of advice adding yeah. on like, don't need to do it for money. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just do yep. it for yourself. I love people who are obsessed with music and can't go a day without jamming their uh -huh. ukulele, but, you know, have another job. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's so cool. I yeah. love it. I yeah. love that they can get such delight out of something that is not a career for them, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes it kills it too, you know? Like doing something like where you have to do it all the time versus mm -hmm. just enjoying it and doing it when you can. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, it doesn't have to be a job. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be related to money. Thank you for sharing that. That, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you gave so much of your time to us and we really appreciate it. We're so excited to just follow your journey and all the things you have coming up, all the things that you had already happen. It's it's so inspiring to like for us and so many people just like watching your journey. Mm -hmm. so oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing your story and you know, always sharing your music and we're excited for everything you're going to do. Excited to see the film, new yeah. new era of that. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So on Instagram, you're P Funk Love mm -hmm. um, and PaulaFuga.com. Yes, PaulaFuga Hawaii.com. Hawaii mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. And then, yeah, stay tuned for her upcoming announcements. Uh, there's a lot going on, so we're excited. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Please subscribe to Uncut Hawaii. Um, like, um, tell your friends about it. And thank you for watching. Aloha. 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 Aloha.